Hi everyone, Kanupsi here, and the Essential Phone was sort of the dream phone for a lot of people when it was first announced, but since then the company has been facing a lot of issues. Starting off with really no transparency for customers who bought the phone, next a fairly big customer data leak where a whole bunch of emails and IDs were leaked, but eventually CEO Andy Rubin made up for this, and finally the phone still isn't really perfect at this point in time. But after all of this difficulty the company has faced, they still made a fairly good phone, except for a few aspects. But let's start off with the good things. The design is beautiful. The ceramic back and titanium sides together lend to a great hand feel. It's hard to explain just how this phone feels, but to put simply, it feels expensive. It just doesn't feel flimsy or cheap at all. There's no branding and everything is flush on the back of the phone, so the camera doesn't stick out at all. The ceramic back is scratch resistant, but ceramic is brittle and easy to crack, so don't drop this phone on the back. I'm sure some channels will do drop tests soon, but I'm not going to try it, so look out for those videos. The fingerprint scanner is average, like it's fairly fast but not like ridiculously fast, but does the job pretty well. And speaking of fingerprints, this phone picks up a lot and definitely does show them. Even on this white variant, you can still see fingerprints and smudges on the ceramic back. So to prevent that and make the fingerprint scanner a bit easier to find as well, a dbrand skin is your essential choice. I'll leave a link down below. Besides those main big standout details, the design is still awesome, even for the small things. The buttons are in the perfect place, especially that power button, and they feel great. They're just very tactile. The speaker's loud, but not really the best sounding speaker ever unfortunately, but does the job well, and the LED for notifications is definitely a great touch. The ear speaker is pretty high, and it's not bone conduction like what I originally thought it was, and during phone calls, it can feel a bit uncomfortable as you're putting the edge of the phone directly onto your ear. I've used the phone on the TELUS network the last few days here in Canada, and the experience is pretty great for both calls and LTE, and calls do definitely sound great, but the ear speaker can be a bit sharp like I just mentioned. Just something I thought I'd point out. The front of the phone of course has that now iconic 5.7 inch 2560x1312 display with a cutout up top for the camera. The cutout up top is definitely not noticeable during daily usage and some apps get this full corner to corner display treatment while others add a symmetrical bar at the top to match the bottom. It is a really genius way to do it and avoids those black bars that are found in the Galaxy S8 for example in incompatible apps or when watching videos. However, it would be perfect if it had an OLED display. Here, it's an LCD display, so the blacks don't really blend in that well with the actual bezel, so you can definitely tell that it is screen. But despite that, the display looks really good with great sharpness and vibrant, beautiful colors. The clean, nearly totally stock Android looks fantastic on this phone, and the high-end Snapdragon 835 and 4GB of RAM work together fantastically for a buttery smooth experience. Not once during my daily usage have I really experienced any sort of lag or delay when using this phone, except for one thing which we'll touch on a bit later. And the phone has a fairly long lasting 3040mAh battery, enough for a full day of mixed usage, but some days it drains a bit faster for me, so it's a bit inconsistent. But that charging cube, also unbranded, is hella fast. Like, it's generally surprising how quick this phone can actually charge with that cube. But the phone gets really warm while charging, so keep an eye out for that. So, at this point in the video, I've talked about all the positive things about this phone. But now, it's time for the negatives and the disappointments. It really all starts with the things that Essential left out, like an SD card slot, water resistance, and a headphone jack really aren't essential to Essential, apparently. Personally, I'm used to having no headphone jack, I've really embraced Bluetooth audio and the dongle, but having no SD card slot and no water resistance in 2017 is a bit iffy. All these features are things that people have really come to expect on phones in 2017, so not having them here has deterred many people from actually buying this phone or even considering it. But now, let's talk about those cameras in depth. The front 8 megapixel selfie camera takes good photos, and the front facing camera shoots 4K video which is definitely very impressive and quite interesting overall. And now it's that time to talk about the back 13 megapixel dual camera system, the real disappointing factor for this phone. Like outdoors, it's fine. Good shots can be possible, but the app when taking photos is super laggy and slow and sometimes won't even open from the lock screen. 
The camera likes to overexpose a lot and zooming in, a lot of detail gets muddy and there's green present no matter where you're shooting photos. This being all said, the camera is still capable of taking some good shots if you hold really still as the camera is slow to take pictures. The whole overall camera experience reminds me of phones from like a few years ago with their cameras. It's just not really a refined experience. Cameras have gotten a lot better in a very short period of time and at this price point you really expect a lot. There's also a black and white monochrome mode, but it's not really anything too special. Unfortunately though, it does get a bit worse. When the lights go down, quality takes a nosedive. Things get very blurry or just don't even focus at all. Photos are full of noise and grain, and it's just not really a great look. The 4K video does look decent, but with no stabilization and a lot of noise indoors, it's really not that great either. This is the latest softer version available at this time, and it could be fixed in the future, but for now, the outcome is a bit dim. Okay, so here is the bottom line. This is still a good overall phone despite all of the issues the company has faced and some of the issues I just mentioned as well. The display is good, the design is the key standout feature for this phone, the attention to detail is amazing, the performance is great, the software is great, but the real negatives are the lack of some of the major features, the price, and the mediocre camera experience. Here's the final thing I want to say. If you don't mind any of those issues or problems, and you don't mind the high price tag, you're still going to enjoy this phone. It's really a great overall Android device. But keep in mind by next year, they're probably going to figure everything out and really make a perfect phone if they're still around by then. In the meantime, there are plenty of great Android phones available with all the features you want for even better prices and are definitely better deals. And that's it for this video, like it if you liked it, leave a comment down below your thoughts on the essential phone, subscribe, and thank you for watching.